The iPhone 16 is here with the all new camera control button and redesigned cameras for spatial video. Apple seems to be making incremental changes on the outside, but the inside usually tells a different story iPhones have been changing internally every year. They've also been getting less repairable every year. iOS 18 has slightly changed all that. They're now allowing for easier part calibration on Apple original parts that were obtained from a phone without activation locks. So what does this mean for the iPhone 16? Will we be able to swap parts with this phone and another without issues? Is the new camera control button serialized? What changed on the inside? Let's find out. This looks absolutely incredible. I love the color difference between the back glass and the camera bump. Let's uh, let's remove this peel. The unboxing experience was kind of weak, but that's not what we're here for. Let's uh, let's check out that camera control button first, and then we'll open this thing up. So this is made of sapphire glass, much like the old Touch ID home buttons. Let's just confirm that this is indeed made of sapphire real quick. Sapphire does not scratch easily, so if this thing scratches, well, we might have been lied to. I'm pressing pretty hard right now. It doesn't sound good. Let's see if we scratched it. I can't see any scratches, so I'm inclined to believe that it is Sapphire, but I'm sure Jerry Rig will let us know if that's the truth. Still using ugly, not cute charger? What the hell are you doing? This happy guy is made by Ugreen and supports up to 100 watt charging. 100 watt in this tiny charger. Not only that, but he'll do it all with a smile on his face. Imagine how happy he'd be if he charged an iPhone 15 Pro from zero to 60% in just 30 minutes. This happy. Actually though, that's how fast this charger is. With three USB-C ports, one USB-A port, this is literally all you need. I pretty much only use Ugreen now to charge all my devices and I genuinely love their products. This Ugreen Uno is a great addition to my collection. <laughs> I have a problem. Ugreen has a whole line of Uno chargers for sale and they're all made to last. They also just dropped a two-in-one Uno charger, which is Qi2 certified and also a happy boy. This thing looks uh, incredible. Click the link in the comments or the description and pick one of these up for yourself. These are genuinely the best iPhone accessories you can buy. I absolutely love them. Thank you, Ugreen, for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. First things first, as always, we have to unscrew the bottom pentalobe screws. We did buy two of these this year to make sure that that camera control button isn't serialized. It honestly might be, but I'm eager to find out. For now, we'll just focus on this phone. Let's go ahead and unscrew. Because the iPhone 15 opened from the back, we're gonna assume that this one does also. And to open it, we have to heat this up to loosen the adhesive, so we're gonna cook the iPhone 16. While the iPhone 16 is cooking, I want to show you guys the iPhone 16 Pro. Opening this phone up, we can see that it's got a complete redesign. It now opens from the back instead of opening from the front like the 15 Pro. Just because a phone looks the same on the outside doesn't mean it'll look the same on the inside. It also has a metal cover over the battery. I wonder if the 16 has this. The iPhone 16 is done cooking. We're going to use our massive suction cup, place it at the end of the bottom of the iPhone and close it up. Now we're just gonna pull. They apparently evolved the infusion process this year of the paint in the back glass. No idea what that means, but we'll be scratching a little bit of it off to see exactly what they meant by that later on in this video. I'm not sure if Apple is using a stronger adhesive this year, but it's quite hard to pull up on this back glass. It's giving more trouble than I'm used to. That was scary. We'll pour some isopropyl alcohol to speed up this process. And we just need to make sure that we can get our plastic prying card underneath, just like that. Now we can remove the big ass suction cup and pry around the back glass. I don't know if there are any flex cables on the edges, so I'm making sure to not pry in too deep. The back glass is starting to come up. It looks like the flex cable is on the right side. We need to steer clear of that. Looks like we're almost there. And now we should be able to open it up. That is the first look at the iPhone 16 on the inside. And well, it's a beautiful phone. What can I say? Uh, it looks like we accidentally broke one of the clips for the back glass. That's quite odd. That's never happened before. Hopefully that's not an issue when people are trying to fix this. Now we have to find out where the battery goes because I want to remove the back glass. 
Um, it looks like it goes under here. We'll go ahead and unscrew this cowling first. Remove it. It looks like it is clipped into the board right over here. And now right away we can obviously tell that this is the battery because it has the positive and negative sign on it. So we're gonna go ahead and unclip that. And then we're going to disconnect the back glass. There we go. On the back glass, we obviously have our wireless charger, our flash, and rear microphone. But this wireless charger is Qi2 certified, so it supports up to 25 watts of charging. If we compare the magnet array under some magnet paper of the iPhone 16 back glass to the 15, I can't really see a difference. Can you? We'll remove the iPhone 15 back glass. Obviously, they restructured the cameras for spatial video with the Apple Vision Pro. We have a bigger battery a weird looking pull tab over here, and they resize the Taptic engine, likely to make space for the bigger battery. The board is more of an L shape than its predecessor, and we also have a cute little Apple logo on it. The camera control button doesn't really seem to take up much space, but you can see the wiring that goes all the way up around the battery to the motherboard. What was really interesting to me is that the SIM card tray is longer on the 16 versus the 15, and if we turn it over, it looks like they actually flipped it. So if we pull out the SIM card, it now goes in sideways. That's very interesting, and because we're in Canada, we get to see things like this, where a lot of the American reviewers obviously won't because they have no SIM cards. We'll put the iPhone 15 aside, and I want to investigate what this battery pull tab situation is. This looks really strange and it's calling my name, so let's see what this is all about. I really think this is just a pull tab, but it honestly might not be. Yeah, this definitely isn't a pull tab. I struggled for so long to get the battery removed, but it turns out Apple actually released instructions on how to remove the battery. Apparently, the iPhone 16 uses electrically induced adhesive. You need to take a nine volt battery and connect it to the metal part on this pull tab and then connect the black probe to the speaker. Once you're done that, you apparently just hold the connection and then the battery should just come up with little to no resistance. Of course, it resisted me. Ah! Oh my god. What the hell is that? What? What is this? Am I supposed to just pull up on it? This thing doesn't make sense to me. Apple, why did you make it harder to replace your batteries? So it looks like behind the battery, there's a heat sink and the adhesive runs all the way along the heat sink. This is a shiny material, but I mean, batteries need to be replaced and if they're this difficult, well, you're asking for trouble. I almost forgot, we need to put this aside and put all our attention on the back glass. I really wanna see what Apple means by evolved infusion. Does it look any different from the iPhone 15 back glass that's also infused? Let's find out. Yes, you can expect to see back glass mods this year, but we're probably going to do it mainly on the 16 Pro because, uh, well, you already saw why. That should be enough. Um, okay. It doesn't look that different from last year's. It's hard to tell without scratching all of it off, but you can see a hint of blue. It just doesn't really look that much better. It's time to take a look at that motherboard. So we're gonna move the back glass that's infused aside. And we're also gonna remove the stupid battery with the stupid pull tabs aside. We'll grab our Phillips screwdriver and we're gonna start unscrewing. It looks like most of the screws in here are Phillips, which is a weird change of pace for Apple. They mentioned in the keynote that we updated the main logic board, centralizing the chip placement and optimizing the surrounding architecture. I wanna see exactly what that means. Oh, looks like we could just pull out the front camera, the infrared illuminator, and the dot projector. That was extremely easy, and we'll continue disconnecting. So it's likely they placed it over a heatsink, but I'm really not sure. That's what we're gonna find out. We'll put the earpiece speaker aside. Now we should be able to lift up the board. Of course, the display is still connected. It's connected from the other side, so we have to be really careful not to damage that. We'll unscrew these two shields, disconnect the display, and what I believe to be the ambient light sensor. And now we have the motherboard completely free. 
The A18 chip likely resides underneath this metal plate, which is pressed up against this graphite film. Uh, that doesn't seem like anything special to me, unless there's another heat sink under the graphite film, which, uh, well, let's find out. Let's peel up this graphite film and see what we find. Yeah, it's just graphite film. Next, we'll remove the screen. This looks very similar to the iPhone 15. Now, let's get a closer look at that camera control button. It's held in by a few Phillips screws and a few brackets. And there's a tiny connector over here that's likely connecting the capacitive side of the button to the tactile switch side. I've been messing with this camera control button for a little while now and I can't see any feasible method to actually pull it out without breaking it. It looks like it's just welded in and well, I don't want to damage it because of our repairability test so I'm going to leave it alone for now. But if you can't replace this, well, that's kind of concerning. Now it's time to clean everything up and see if that camera control button is serialized. We're going to put all the internals that we don't need back into this housing, take this motherboard, put it into a completely new iPhone 16, and see what happens. Will we get a message to calibrate the camera control button? Let's find out. This is the new phone with the other motherboard inside. Let's see what kind of options we get at the parts and calibration menu. We'll head to settings, about, parts and service history, so we have, whoa, we have battery, and now we have enclosure. So none of these are new, but enclosure definitely is. That's really strange. Looks like Apple did serialize the camera control button. They wrote enclosure as the part that was swapped, which probably references the entire housing and maybe even the back glass. Because this button is non-removable, there likely won't be a way around this message. Surprisingly, without calibration, the camera control button still seems to work as usual. However, the phone is continuously turning off and on, and we haven't really been able to pinpoint the cause. It just did it as I say that. The front cameras still don't work and completely glitch out just like they did with the iPhone 15 Pro when we swap parts. Of course, if we were to calibrate the cameras, this would most likely work. Assuming Apple fixed its iOS 18 software bugs. Aftermarket parts will likely still run into all the anti-repair tactics Apple left with no easy resolution. This whole menu kind of seems like Apple's best attempt to phase out aftermarket parts while beginning to mass produce and sell their own parts on a global scale. Of course, they haven't announced that but that is my assumption anyway guys thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed this one i know i did i'll see you in the next one peace